painting the ceiling up here. Yeah. Right. Draw then. Where are you going? I'll not be long. Oh, right. But where are you going to? I'm, I'm going to the bath. What? Look, I'll miss my bus out. Hang so on. Hang on. The bath? That's right. All right. But, Amy, you can't swim. I'm not going swimming. They've got baths for bathing in, too. So I'm just going down the baths for a bath. It's only two pins, the towels included. Oh. Oh, but... Look, I'm not missing that bus, Arthur. I... Look... I'll have a good old soak in nice hot water and come home again, won't I? Er, uh, yeah. Right. Right. Good. Try then. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to... We present Julia Ford and Pierce Quigley in The Fancy Man by Mike Stott. A stylish marriage I can't afford a carriage But you'll look sweet On the seat Of a bicycle built for two And well, that was that She went for a bath And I went back to the ceiling And painted it Ooh. Ah, good stuff eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Wendy Well, I forget, lad Nice spot of bowling this afternoon, Arthur Line and length. Pretty really much to the point. Uh, no wickets, though. Oh, never mind, never mind. I should have had Crossley, at least. LBW, I mean. True, I. Tell Amy now. Bathing. What about when she come home? Oh, all spick and span and smiling, yeah. Oh, perfumed, smelling of scent. Uh, no, no, just fresh and clean. <laughs> well, she would be, wouldn't she? She'd had a bath. <laughs> mm. But did she need a bath? Mind you. Has anybody as owns a bar of soap and a flannel, but... Uh, did she... Need a bath? Well, no. That's your seat. Dominoes, Arthur. Uh, Mr. Elliwell. Uh, not just now, Jack. We're, uh, we're, we're talking, Jack. Oh, uh, what? Uh, cricket, is it? Uh, that umpire? No. Uh, it's five it matter, Jackie, if you would. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, it is Saturday night, after all. He's a good lad, Jackie. What was said, Arthur, when Amy come home? Oh, uh, well, not a lot, really. She said the bedroom ceiling looked nice. And then she said, did I think she looked nice? And... I said I did, and we had a mug of cocoa. Well, that sounds all right. Yeah. Well, everything is all right, really, I suppose. Suppose? Well, it wasn't just the once, you see, Dad. Hmm? She went again that Friday. What? Same week? I know. Two bats in one week. My daughter. And the same again this week. Ooh. Twice. Well... Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> a puzzle. Well, yeah. I mean, now and again for the novelty, but... Did you say nothing, Arthur? Have you not said nothing? Well, not yet, no. I'm working out what to say, and how. Oh, I said it seemed a bit, uh, odd, but... Amy said they'd built the bath for people to go and have baths in, so... Oh, well, that'll be it. What? Trying to be posh. Going for baths like the knobs do. Oh? I did think she might be hinting at something... Hinting? Hinting what? Well, well, that perhaps I should wash more, or... You old bear. You're spotless, Arthur. Why, when she first said she might wed you, and I said, why? No offence, lad. She said, amongst other things, like being big and fit and not bad-looking and sober, she said, well, his feet don't smell. And I said, right. Oh, did she? Oh, did you? Oh, well, a puzzle, then, it is. Mm. Well, then. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to get a bit near the knuckle now, Arthur. Are you? I am. I mean, would you say she was, uh, restless in other ways? At all? No. Oh, would uh No. Hmm. Right. So it's what I say, then. Ideas above her station. So, the answer, Arthur, is a wallop on the bottom. Huh? Don't try to reason with that and tell her. Two baths a week is daft, and if there's any argument, didn't wallop. That's what I always did, and her mother did the same, till she died. Well, yeah, when she was a little girl, but... The years of it I had, being daft, our Amy, right from being a girl. Why can't I stop at school? Why do I have to go in a mill? Why can't I train to be a librarian? And the answer, wallop, truly. Well, I know, but... 
I'm not smacking my wife's bottom, am I? You know. Well, well not this day and age, no. Hmm. Well then, the subject is closed. You have a modern marriage, Arthur. I wish you well. Oh, the fog on her. <laughs> Me dad, Mr. Big Mouth. Do this, do that, sure up. <laughs> well, yeah, but he is good at dominoes. Oh, well then. Is that what you talked about? Dominoes? Uh, and cricket, a bit. Football. New season coming up, you know. Prospects and work and weather. And soap and water. Baths? Uh, yeah. I mentioned it in passing. Oh, you did. And what did my dad reckon? In passing. As if I didn't know. He said you were trying to be posh. Oh, that's me dad. He said I should put my foot down. He said you'd always had daft ideas and this were another one. And what I should do is wallop you. Yeah, that's me dad. Mm, not me, though. No, love. Not you. I love you, you know. Oh, good. I love you too. So, that's all right then. <laughs> Arthur. Mm? Do you need pyjamas on tonight? Uh, well, it is nearly autumn, you know. Oh, right then. Night. Mm. Night, love. Sleep tight. Right then. Smashing. Uh, me? You know, I did work this morning. Five foot down in a smelly trench digging. And I did bowl 25 overs this afternoon. And never got a wicket. And I am playing again tomorrow. And you have had a few pints. I have. It's Saturday night. Why not? I don't drink all week, do I? No, you go practising all week. Practising for cricket and practising for football and doing things for pitching. Well, them's me interests, me. Good God, them's me hobbies. Well, I know they are. And anyway, you know you could come to Saturday nights. There's plenty of wives down the shepherds every Saturday night. Well, there are. And doing what? Knitting. Sitting, knitting. Watching fellas getting tiddly. It's not like Toby jugs against the wall. Well, oh, what's this about? Eh? I'm tired, yeah? Good night, then. <sighs> yeah, good... Full moon tonight. Mm. Imagine Manchester now. Albert Square in the moonlight. Or London. Or Paris. Gay Paris, they call it. The night is young. The moon is full. Dancing the night away. Girls drinking fizzy wine and men giving them passionate glances. Mm, I dare say. And they've not bowled 25 overs today and not got a wicket. I'm turning the gas off. I lie here in the dark. That's a spirit. The night is young, and so are we. Yeah. Abandoned on your own, are you? Yeah. Come on, uh, Where's the kid is? Oh, Ed, he's gotten. That means they're on the swings and he's in the bar. Then he'll come out and lie under that chestnut tree and off to the landing on. Snoring. Men, eh? <laughs> oh, wow, sir. Oh, oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. He's going well, isn't he, Arthur? Seems so. That's one or two he's got out now, isn't it? Four or five, I think. Mm. Mm. A purple patch. Mm. Do you understand?
understand it, Amy. Cricket? No. Do you? Not a lot. Mind you, I don't think we're missing much, you know. I just like fresh air and sunshine. Yeah. Oh, come on now, Arthur! I'm going to ask for a job, lad! You do get work, too, don't we? You think it might matter? Still, I'll say this for your Arthur. He does look well. Airing in, shucking that mole like that. He looks all fit and fierce. Quite athletic, really. Unlike some, eh? You do moan, you. Your head is all right. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't complain. What is that man that's just come out? What is he doing with the bat? It's in the floor like that. I don't know. He dear. Mystery, eh? Yeah? Had my dad round our house this morning. Cup of tea, you know. You do surprise me. Do I? Well, he did surprise me. Two baths a week, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. Seems me dad thinks, Arthur thinks, that folk might think it's funny. So Arthur's asked him if he'd ask me if I'd have a quiet word with you. Oh, I. I don't think I'll bother now. Good. Right. What happened then? That man is up in the air for Kenny Kershaw to catch it, but he didn't. Is there any road? What's it like then? Down the bath. What do you get for your tuppence? Big hairy man screws you back, does he? No. Oh, well, I'll then. Might do. Look, I'm supposed to find out if you're restless. My dad thinks you must be. I think he thinks you might be seeing a fancy man. Or oh, thinking of it. Down the bath. Amy, can we make this a conversation? What about? I've nothing to say. Anything I do is nothing to do with my dad, nor you neither, Edie. Oh, good grief, it's nice of him dancing at the Folly Berger, is it? What? Oh, it's a place in Paris where they have women dancing with not a lot on and men looking at him. Mm. Yeah! He's done it again, see? He's not that man. Stick it down. Any room? Amy. Edie, I go to the bath. I have a bath. I come home. That's all. Right, then. Lovely weather we've been having, haven't we? Just lately. Oh, sure up, will you? God, I hate this place sometimes. Everybody knowing you and watching you and judging. Thinking they know what's going on inside a person. And oh, damned gossip. Hey? They spread it round like mucky meadows. Hey, and hey, now, not me. That's one thing I don't do. So do, do, do talk to me or don't bother. But I don't accuse me of blabbing. Never, right? I know. I'm sorry, Edie. Right, then. We'll talk about something else. I've got plans for my winter coat. Are you happy, Edie? Are you? And never mind babies. You. Eddie. Oh. Oh. How do you mean? Yes, I am. How do you mean exactly? Oh, oh. Yeah. Amy? Oh, nothing, never mind. I mean, if you mean him, what I think you mean. I mean being married. Being husband and wife together. In every way. Every. anything you can think of. Anything you can do together and say together and think together and... Anything and everything and together. Oh, don't you think that would be wonderful, Edie? Being married like that. It depends who too, really. I mean, hey, look, look at that fat man going into bat now. If somebody's married to him, I should think. Look at him. All wobbly. Or even our Eddie. Well, some days he goes to work and shuts that door and... My shoulders come down like a weight had fell off. I mean... You don't know what I'm saying, do you? Oh, yes, I do. You're not that much brighter than me, you know. Not that much different than others are. Listen now, Amy, kid. You can only be married to a man. And men are... As they are. And it's just not fair to go expecting too much of them. I mean, dogs don't dance, do they? Pigs don't fly. No, now listen now. Arthur now. I believe you meet you did better than some. 
No, I know comparisons are obvious. So I'll leave Eddie out, but if you are thinking another man might be different, well, think twice, love. Look at them all out there. All sorts of men in that field. Labourers like Arthur. Educated chaps like Dr. Peach. Big fat ones, little skinny ones, young ones, old ones. It, him with freckles from gasworks. But look at them all. Doing what they like best. Chasing a little ball about. And that man with the bad stuff was tapping the floor. Why didn't they always do that? Anyway, Arthur chucks it at them sticks. That chap tries to clock it one, and if he does, what well, then? Him and his chum go running up and down between the sticks. And well, did you ever in your life see anything silly? Oh, a worse in winter. Rain, mud, sleet, and what do they do? Take off the long pants, put on short pants, go kicking a ball up and down dirty sodden fields. Off the slither away, eh, mate? And yet, you give them men one day a week off to do anything they want to do, and what do they do? That! Chasing balls! And we sit here hoping. No, no. Out, Jack! Out, Jack! Look at Arthur's face. Look at that man's face now. Did you ever in your life see such satisfaction? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, love. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh. Oh, Amy. Oh, that was... Oh, that was a deep bobby dazzler, love. Eh. Oh. Oh. Amy. Amy. You're the girl for me. <laughs> oh. You are it, love. Yeah. Mm, bet you are too. Oh, that would have belted. Oh. The perfect end to the perfect day. Eight wickets for 31 runs, eh? Best ever. The finest and fiercest spell of speed bowling ever witnessed at this club. Dr. Peach said that right in front of me. Eight wickets for 31 runs. I'm finishing up with an hat-trick. Amy? Wonderful. Oh, don't worry, love. I'll not get too big-headed. I did have a bit of luck, too. Oh, some. Still, for once in my life. Eight wickets for 31 runs, eh? Oh, I love you, Amy. Now then, fact is, I'm peckish. Cold roast in the meat safe. Oh, perfect. How about you, Duck? Bring you some up? No, thanks. Oh. No? With pickles on? Eh? No, thanks. Oh, well, you don't know what you're missing. Still, pyjamas. Uh. Arthur. Hello? Do you ever want to talk to me and tell me things that you've never told nobody? And talk to me about things you couldn't talk to anybody else about? Uh, no. Do I? No. I know what you'd like, love. Coco. Now then, slippers now. I saw... Our Edie at the cricket. Uh, oh? She said, my dad said, you'd said you wished I didn't go to the bath. No, now... No. No? Well... I think our Edie thinks there might be something funny going on at the baths. A fella. I think that's what she thinks. And my dad thinks I need a bun in the oven. Arthur, what do you think? Oh, well, I'd not say no to a kitty, would I? No. Or two. One of each, you know. <laughs> and as to the other thing, baths, well, I'm only thinking what people might think. Amy, it's not me that's worried as such. Well, I know you love, don't I? You do? Of course I do. I know there'd not be, you know, another fella, but... You know that? Yes, but... <sighs> oh, look, do what you want. I'm hungry. Food. Right. He knows you. He knows you. Huh. I know there'd not be another fella. Do what you want. <laughs> Amy. Amy. 
Give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy over the love of you. <laughs> Yes, right. Very funny. But something must be done, gentlemen. Decisions must be taken before we are overtaken by events, i.e. the goalposts falling down. And who knows, hitting our goalie on the head, which he wouldn't like, would you, Arthur? No. Well, no, but... Uh... And as a doctor, neither would I, because I'd have to treat him and not get paid, not by this club. So now, as your chairman, I must bring it to your attention that the goalposts were not creosoted nor painted last year. Nor the year before, nor the year before that. So they do need at least a good coat of paint by somebody. So now, any volunteers? Note that down, Arthur. Despite impassioned pleas from the chairman, there were no volunteers again. <laughs> Item two, the subs. An increase there too. Now, now, I know, I know, but there's been no increase in subscription charges to members or supporters for... How long, Arthur? 17 years. Since 1906. So now, not before time, we have a proposal for an increase in subs. Those in favour? Those against? Note it down, Arthur. No increase in subs again. Why we bother? Uh, now, 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 hang on now, members, please. We have a third item to debate this year. I know, I know, a novelty, and not welcome to some, but the bar will be open for hours yet, Jackie, so settle down now, just a minute. Hmm? And listen. Thank you. Now, as a medical practitioner and chairman of this club, with an ancient and fairly honourable tradition going back into the mist of time, I wish to propose a major improvement to the club's facilities in the region of the changing rooms. Now, we have a very muddy pitch. Not muddy, very muddy. And one cold tap round the back of the shed is not enough in this day and age. Well, I mean, this is the 20th century, after all, it is. So, I want all members to consider the value of installing baths with hot water. Now... <laughs> sorry. I don't... There's something funny about that. I mean, Arthur, what have I said? Something funny? Arthur. And what did he say that was so funny? Well, bats. That's all, bats. And there they were, like little lads in school tittering, as if he'd said bum or some such. A... And I am sat there on that stage, me, being laughed at. Me! And then having to tell Dr. Pete why they were laughing, and how it was me they were laughing at and not him, and... Me! Me! Sat there, red as a beat, I were. I'll not stand for it, Amy. No! I don't go anymore. No, you damn well don't. I'm not having that happen. Never again bloody laughed at in public. I've said I've stopped going. And I've said you have, because in all my life I have you never... You don't order me, you! You don't command me, mister. I said I have stopped going to the bath any road already. But... Right! Because I decided. Me. Not because you tell me so. Right, because you do not order me about, mister. Well, what do you do, then? I mean, last night. You went out last night. I go for walks. It's what I do now. I go for walks. And I'm going out now. For a walk. Right now, listen. <laughs> Amy. Amy. Oil fire. And that was down near three weeks ago, Doctor. And ever since, every night, ever since, that's what she's done. Gone for a walk every night. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. I mean, I come home from work, me tea's on the table. She washes up after and... Out. Gone. And scarcely a damn word said neither. Yes, no, oh, really. It's driving me daft, Doctor. It is. Oh, she does all her work. At work and at home. And no complaints there, no. But look at me, Doctor. I'm not working right. I'm not sleeping right. I'm not... Did you see me bowling Sunday? Like a flaming Nancy I were. I were, though, wasn't I, Doctor? Well, hello, Pa. True, but... And what happens when the football season starts, eh? Can you see me keeping goal? Like this? Properly? Uh, right. The problem. But, but, but if I can ask, Arthur... I what? want you to talk to her. I want you to see her and talk sense to her and find out what the hell's wrong with her because something is into it. Something. Yes. Right. But, um, if I might... Have you not tried talking? Huh? What? There's no answer. 
I ask her what she's doing going for walks every night, and she says she's going for walks. I ask her why, she says because she wants to, and out she goes. And when she comes back, well, I'm either in bed or asleep, or... There's no talking to her, you see. There's no talking sense to her at all. Mm. But uh, people are talking, are they? Or yes, they it... are. Well, they were about the baths, weren't they, eh? Giggling, muttering. And they are now, too. Blokes at work, mates, and Mrs. Melodew next door, and... Oh, not out loud. No, no, they shut the traps when I'm about, but... You can tell, can't you, eh? When folk are talking about you and looking at you and thinking things. Yes. So this is the worry, Arthur. Uh, gossip. The, uh, the public more than private tension. It's both! It's all of it! I'm not enjoying anything! Not me work, nor me sport, not... Hellfire! I'm even off me food! A bit. Uh, right. Well, now, uh, clearly action is called for. The uh, question is, what? Because I don't think this is something a bottle of tablets can solve, you see, is it? Well, if I could just sleep, or... You see, Arthur, there is no medicine for gossip, alas. Uh, there's only one cure. Ignore it. It's almost always without foundation, and... Well, uh, in my own case, uh, recently... Hmm? Oh, you, you'll have heard things, I don't doubt... Uh, concerning a Miss McPherson and yours truly, allegedly up to no good, an attempt, the scout and guides camp. Uh, well... Oh, yes, yes, I know. Wicked gossip, not to be dignified by so much as a denial, as I said to Mrs Peach, who had the good sense to agree with me, I'm happy to say. So, truly now, Arthur, gossip is beneath us, below our notice, to be ignored. If possible... Unless, of course, you've some reason to uh, lend credence to whatever's being said. What is being said, Arthur? D d do you know? Oh, aye. She's up to something. A fancy man. That's what's being said. Well, ain't it? Well, haven't you heard talk, Doctor? Well, mention. I can't but... ignore it. There's something wrong. What? Well, a woman goes out for walks till all bloody hours rain or shine in the dark and comes home and lies there like a board and... There's something wrong. There is. And I want it sorted. I do, I do, though. Right, right. So something must be done. Well, I mean, a fortnight from now we're playing Ward of Wanderers, aren't we? And remember last year? Seven nil, my God. Ah, well, I was on my honeymoon. Exactly, Arthur. Yes. Sorry? I mean, you've not been married long. Do you see? Well, no. You see, Arthur... People come in here and they tell me the most extraordinary things, or, or, or quite ordinary things which might seem extraordinary to them, but ordinary to me. So I, I'm saying things do take time, don't they? Sometimes. Uh, things? Between men and women? Uh, oh. Hmm. You mean bed and that? I do, Arthur. But... Oh, but... That's it. All. Often is, Arthur, in my experience, which is considerable. But I always ask. If she's all right, I always ask. Well, you would do. You're a gentleman. And she says she is. Always. Yes. She would. They do. But why not say it? Look, Arthur, <sighs> now, 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 don't take this personally, and nor should Mrs Granville neither... Oh, grief. It's a general widespread condition, especially in the early days of wedded bliss. Oh, I mean, some takes me like ducks to water, but oh, oh, I could tell you tales, lad. I mean, but, but uh, no, no, to concentrate. Look, now, Arthur, you asked me if I could see my way to see Mrs. Granville. Well, I did, but... Well, the fact is, I already have, you see. Eh? Hey? Well, as her doctor, I've had occasion to be consulted by her fairly recently. And, oh, no, 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 nothing was said as such, but uh, headaches, you know, back pains, all the usual stuff, symptoms. But... but that's what she meant? That she didn't like it in bed? With me? Well, well no, I can't go into details, but I'm in strictest confidence, of course, in my line of business. But uh, I would say so, yes. And I'll say this, Arthur. We want you settled and happy, don't we? And ditto Mrs. Granville, yes. And you in that goal, playing a blinder and beating Wardle Wanderers. Essential, right? So now, my advice, Arthur, do not regard this little 
difficulty has been unusual. Far from it. And don't regard Mrs. Granville's nocturnal promenades as being suspicious. I should be very surprised if she does any more than ramble about being miserable. And to clear your mind on that point, Arthur, follow her. See for yourself. And then when she comes home, sit the little lady down and have a quiet chat about things. Explain to her how things take time. And be encouraging, you see. Manly, calm. Sensible reassuring, eh? The husband, eh? Tonight, hm? Arthur? What? You did what? Now, now. You went to the doctor for him to see me. And, and where has he talked to you about me? My God. Now, Amy, God. said it. Sit down and listen. Please, sit down. The cheek, the cheek of it. Yes, right, well, maybe so. And if so, I'm sorry. And I'm more sorry that I didn't know and hadn't been told before by you, but... You couldn't tell. You can't tell. Well, I mean, happen you can, if you're looking. But honestly now, I thought, well, things were all right. Oh. But they weren't right. And they're not right, no. But honestly now, Amy, he's going for walks going to help. Because, you know, I've been thinking, sitting here tonight, and... Do you know what I thought of when I was learning to ride a bike? I did. And I mean, time after time after time, I'd fall off that bike. But then, all of a sudden, I could ride it. Just click. I were off. But, though, what if I'd just fell off the bike and got up and walked away? And, and gone on going for walks every night? I'd never have learned to ride that bike. I, I'm saying, you see, with a bit of help and practice... Well, <laughs> Amy, what's funny? Nothing is. Oh, well, you were grinning, so... Like, um, learning to whistle, eh? Well, there you are. I mean... <laughs> what? And, um, you followed me, did you? Well, Dr Peach said to settle my mind. Oh, did he? And you did what he said? And did it settle your mind? Yeah. Oh, it did. And how far did you follow me for? Well? Well, up Atkinson Street and past the allotments and uh, off up Ramsden Wood Road and up to the end and through the stile and into the wood, that's all. I thought so. Eh? Well, you're very calm, Arthur. I thought there must be a reason. I'm calm because... Because th Dr Peach said to be, yeah. But shame you didn't follow me further, Arthur. You'd not be so calm then. I went into the woods, didn't I? You did. And up through the woods? Well, yeah. And up the moor and onto the top. Well, you might have done. Oh, I did do. But you didn't follow. Well, well no. I... Well, I went to paint the goalposts. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. What's a smile supposed to mean? Did you not notice anybody else, Arthur, when you came out of the woods... When you went up the moor, waiting on the top. I went to paint the goalpost, bloody hell. A man in a suit? No? A brown suit, brown hat, standing by the wall? No, didn't see him? Amy, now... Shame you didn't, you know, follow me all the way. I could have introduced you. This is my husband. This is my lover. On the tops. <laughs> <laughs> Amy? Amy? Oh, well. Oh, help! 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 I've murdered me missus! Where? Where? She were there! What? There! She were there! On the floor, on the rug! Oh, she was. And dead. Well, she's not there now, is she? Which would seem to argue... Oh, hello, Doctor. Arthur. Evening. <sighs> Cup of tea or cocoa, perhaps? Amy! Uh, uh... So, strangled, is she? Throttled, is she? And I'm in bed and now I'm here? Oh, good. Well... I, I don't... I don't... Oh, I am sorry you've been bothered, Doctor. He's been excitable lately, haven't you, Arthur? I see. So, no strangling. Nothing of the sort ever happened, yes? That's right. I've been sitting knitting all the night. Amy! Right. Right. I was at home. I was in bed. I was very nearly asleep. Now I'm not. I am wide awake, so... Right. Right. Arthur, 
Would you step outside for a moment, please? Hey, well, uh, I wish to speak to Mrs Granville in confidence. Oh, really? In confidence, yes. Arthur, please. Uh, but, but... Arthur, please. Sit in the car or stand outside, but just for a few minutes, but do it, please. Oh. Right. Now... Now, there's really no cause. I think there is, Mrs Granville. Amy, I think there is. No strangling at all, eh? And the marks on your throat? Oh, yes. And Arthur babbled in the car, so I know what Arthur did, or nearly did. I know why. This lover on the tops, eh? What I don't know is why you ever told him anything. Why? I'm going to trust you now with a confidence. Oh, I know you feel I've betrayed yours a bit to Arthur, but I'm going to trust you now. You see, I've been got out of bed three times tonight. Once for a toothache, and I'm not a dentist. Once for a man who was thought to be dying in the Roebuck Lounge bar, and was, and had, by the time I got there. And once for you, Arthur. So I am irritated, you see. I am annoyed. I am nearly angry, because I was not alone in bed. And Mrs Peach is visiting her sister in Preston. Hmm? Miss McPherson, yes. Which is, oh, so scandalous. Disgraceful, oh, yes. But nice work if you can get it and not get caught. And certainly not tell. I mean, if I told Mrs Peach the kind of thing you told Arthur, she would take an axe to me. Never mind half strangling me an axe. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Oh, no, it's just, uh, Hasn't she got fat legs, Miss McPherson, and almost a moustache? True, yes. But then look at Mrs Peach. Look at me, eh? I mean, I take what I can get. I say nothing. I'm careful, I'm discreet, I'm alive. I'm not unhappy. And I'm going back to bed and hoping for no interruptions. Take my advice, Amy. Arthur's not a violent man. All he needs is for you to tell him anything you said about any... Fancy, ma'am, was only talk, not true, which it isn't either, is it, though? Isn't it? Good oh, Lord, no. You see, Amy, where this kind of thing is concerned, there are three kinds of people. Those who do, like me, those who think about it for whatever reason, like you, and those who don't do it or think about it, like Arthur. Arthur's... Where is Arthur? And you're not going to change him for the better by telling him tales to make him buck up. Look, just say you're sorry, and he'll say sorry, and we can all go back to bed and hope for the best, Yes. And if it's true, these men would want to love me. It might be true. Oh, who gives a fig what's true or not this time of night? Just say the words. It's like marriage vows, eh? Peace and quiet. You tell people what they want to hear, and that way you avoid the axe, right? Quite right. So now, good night. And... Oh, good night. Just say the words. Mm. Uh. Thank you. I can stop here then. I'll not need to go to Edith. I'll sleep here. Good. 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 Well then. I'm tired. Bed. Work in the morning. Yeah. Right. Amy. What? Well, I mean, Dr. Peach says, he said what you said, it was only... Well, you were only saying it about the fancy man, he says. Uh-huh. What does that mean? Arthur, I'm not answering questions, I'm tired. No, but... I've done a full shift today, I've come home, I've made your tea, I'm mine, I've washed some smalls, I've washed up, I've washed out the lavvy, I've ironed, I've been half strangled, and I'm not answering questions, so... You've got to! You've got to. I mean, you've got to tell me yes or no. Was it said or was it true? Is it true or is it not? Bloody hell. I mean, Amy. Amy! Arthur, you take me as you find me or not at all. Good night. What? What? What the hell does that mean, Amy? We're married. What? Amy! Listen, you, missus, because that's what you are. My missus, and damn it all, we are married. We're not just... We took vows we did in church, promises. Well? To worship each other with our bodies. Well, well, now, all right, but... No, no, things haven't been what they might have been for you. But hellfire, love, I mean, we can talk about that and, and talk it over and, and work something out and... 
can't we? Eh? Amy? Mm -hmm. but, but after. First, now. Is it true or is it not? Have you been seeing a fancy man? Just shake your head or nod, that's all. Oh. Name then. Address. Well. All. All I'm going to do is go and see him and tell him no more. Well, I'm not going to murder him, nor even belt him, nor even... nor even lose my temper. So, well then, Amy, name, address. I'm telling you and him, it's got to stop. It so, stopped. that's all I'll do. I'll only... What? It has stopped. That's what I would have told you if you'd given me a chance. That's why I saw him tonight. To tell him I'd not see him any more. Oh. Oh, uh, and you'll not tell me who, then? Is that right? So I can wander around wondering, can I? I never know. Well, all right, then. All right, but... But I need some answers now, so questions. No, I'm going to bed. Amy! I'll leave the gas on. You can see me. We can see each other. And, and you'll answer questions... Will you? Yeah. All right. Right, well. First, how long has this been going on? This, whatever it is, how long? A few weeks, that's all. Since the night's got warmer. I see. And, er, uh, what has been going on? I mean, we might as well get it sorted and I, I'm very calm, so... What? What has gone on, Amy? It won't seem like much to you. Oh, it won't? Oh, well, what though? Holding hands? Yes. And going for walks? Yes. And? And? Mm. Talking. And kissing. Yeah. And uh, he stroked my hair. Stroked my arms. We touched each other. Touched? Touched what? Oh, what? Tell me! Uh, tell me, once and for all, and I'll keep calm, I'm very calm, but tell me. Well, the best times were at Fletcher's Dam, on that little platform thing, pier, that goes out over the water, with the sun going down and the moon coming up. Oh... We used to sing songs quietly and dance together. And then we'd sit in the rushes if it was dry or lie down, perhaps. And he'd stroke my hair, stroke my arms, kiss me on my neck, just here at the back like a butterfly and he kissed my eyelashes and my nose very very gently and just there on me is sort of a nice tickling feeling and then then and then we'd, we'd get up and come home He'd go off, and I'd come back here, to you, and nothing happened. Not like what you're thinking. Nothing happened, Arthur. Well? You think I believe all this? What? All this rigmarole and talking and touching and nothing happened. Do you think I believe that? Oh, well, once... Something nearly happened. Eh? Hey. Mm hmm? Well, we always said nothing must happen unless we were going to, well, go away together. Or he always said he's not married, so he always said it was everything or nothing. And I had to decide. And so tonight, I decided. What happened? Well, 
I'll show you. It was warm and we'd been dancing. And I was standing like this and he was about where you are. And the air was still warm and it was quiet, very quiet. And he wanted to look at me just to look. So I let him. I, I moved back a little bit and I took my clothes off like this. And I stood there, and he stood where you are, and looked. And did nothing? No, Arthur. Nothing. And I put my clothes on again. Oh, except when he was looking at me, he told me how he'd like to make love to me, to love me if I was free. He told me how he'd stroke me down my back and down my front and here and here and stroke me and kiss me here and here. Ah! Oh, ah! Go on, yes! Ah! Oh, wait for uh, Mrs. Mallager. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, we'll all have a cup of tea and chat about the weather. Oh, uh, uh, Nothing uh, happened. Stop something. The wall. I'll thump you. I'll smash you. 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 Oh, promises. Promises. You promised me. Well, Arthur, nothing happened. He only talked. And I put my clothes back on and came home to you. Arthur. Shall I put my nightie back on? Arthur, shall I leave the gas on? I'm sleeping downstairs. I'm going down them stairs. I'll sleep in the chair and I'll get a stiff neck and I'll make my own breakfast and... Oh. What? Funny? Something funny? You will, you know, get a stiff neck. Oh, and that's funny, is it? An husband with a stiff neck, that's funny, is it? Arthur... Well, I'll tell you something look at me. now... I'll not be funny for long, because if I believe you, which I don't, but if, if, I'll not be shamed and laughed at in my house, my own, that I paid for with my savings where I live, so think on, Amy. Because you are living dangerously now, you are. You. That's not what's supposed to happen, Arthur. Oh, Arthur. Uh, Arthur? It's me, Jackie. Yeah, it, it's dinner time, you see, Arthur. So we're having our dinner now, us. Arthur? I've got some spur pie, if you fancy. Well, you, you didn't bring none, did you? Arthur? There's something the matter, isn't there? Do you not want to talk about it, perhaps? Arthur? No, right then. <laughs> I'll not insist, then. <laughs> only it is only midday. We've six hours to do yet. Arthur? Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Good. Blue label, this is. Not yellow. Blue. The very best day. Yeah. Well. Taste it. No. Yeah. 
No. Arthur? Oh, right. Work it out for yourself. Right. Well, now, um, not drinking, not eating, not talking, just sitting. Mm, with his blue label going cold in the cup. And good gravy gone... <coughs> yes. Sticky on the plate. Well, I think I'll spare myself for washing up and, uh, excuse me, sir, just clear the table and take your plate and mug and... Did you nearly smile then? Look at me, I'm smiling. Shall we talk about this? It. No. All oh, right. Nice day then at work. Oh well, you know, usual. And you? Yeah, same. Yeah, much of a muchness really. Still, good to be back, eh? In our happy home. Oh, it is. Yeah. Now, what next? The weather? Or um, a nice game of noughts and crosses? Or what are you doing? Hey, Arthur! I'm going out. I'm going for a walk, eh? One of your famous walks. Because I can't get tired, and I can't believe you, nothing happened. And I can't get tired, and I might get sloshed too, eh? Yeah, legless I'll get. Pissed as a newt! Arthur, love! Arthur! Right! Right then, monkey. I'll give up asking. Right. I'll see to you then. When you come home, drunk or not, I'll see to you, mister. No lights. Good. Sleep. Good. You'll not wake up. I, I promise you, won't hurt. Hello, love. What? What are you doing? I'm sitting in the chair, waiting for you. There's cheese on the table, pickles too, and a bottle of pale ale. Well? You, you've got no clothes on. No, I know. You... Put some clothes on. No, I don't want to. I want you to look at me, Arthur. Well? Look at me. Arthur... Look at me. I didn't want him. I want you touching me. Kissing me. Arthur? You don't know. You don't know what... And you want me too, don't you? Yes. No. No. Oh, yes, you do. So, I'm going upstairs and I'm going to leave the gas on and I'll watch you take your clothes off and watch you love me. And I'll love you... And we can stop being so stupid. And we can worship each other with our bodies. But have some cheese and pickle first, if you want. I'll be waiting. Oh. Hello? I thought you'd gone to bed. You've got clothes on. I got cold. I thought I might go to our Ediths. I thought you weren't coming up. I wasn't. I wasn't going to. And here I am. And what do you want, Arthur? I want you to do for me what you did for him at Fletcher's Dam. Take, take your clothes off, slow, and and let me look at you. All right. But can I tell you something? Something I should have said, should never have said before, but... I've been going crackers, me, you know. Yeah, that's... I that's went to the cop shop tonight. I, I told Stanley Allsop I was going to murder you. I was going to, too. Was. Oh, that would have been a shame. I think what we'd have missed. Undo me top button. Yeah. Good. Oh. 
Shall I throw him away? My clothes? Yes. Yeah. Good. Will you pull my shoes off? Yeah. Will you roll my stockings off? Yeah. Oh. You see that little mole there? Yeah. Kiss it. Yeah. Oh. And, um, do you think you could have murdered me? Yeah. Why do you think, Arthur? Because they were crackers. Because I couldn't believe you that nothing happened. You and him. But I didn't want to hurt you. I wanted... I think I wanted you to be dead. And you dead as well. Shall I take my vest off? Yeah. Oh. And now, then? Still want me dead? No. No. Arthur, no man has ever touched me or loved me except for you. I never will. I've never wanted another man. Arthur, can you believe me? I think so. But sometimes, it's so frightening, though. Just because you don't believe something, and it's very important, and it, it makes you think... All I could think was dead. Be dead. It's frightening. Arthur, look at me. I'm going to be naked. Oh. Well? Well, I think I'll be all right now. <laughs> oh, good. I think I will be too. <laughs> and did he never hold you like this? No, never. And never touch you? Here? No. Not here? No. Ne not here? Oh, no. Oh, never. Not one. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know what? You've still got your clothes on. I have. <laughs> Bloody soon, won't you ever know? <laughs> oh, you know, I never feel sorry for him. Oh, God! God! Good God, but it wasn't just the once. wasn't just the twice, neither. Dr. Peach, with my hand on my heart now, I am living next door to a bordello. And it's every night. I'm down there all night, some nights. He comes home for work. They scoff down the tea and they're up them stairs like steeplechats. They are. And once it started, as God is my witness, Doctor, it goes on and on and on. And on. Yes. That first night, I thought there was murder being done. Oh, what? Yelling, screaming, eating, screeching. Huh? And that's only him. Huh? What? And I am living next door and trying to sleep. Imagine. Picture it, Doctor. Picture it. Well... And just when you're certain one or other has really murdered the other one or somebody's killed a pair of them and blessed peace can rain, what happens? Well, uh, giggling, laughing. Oh, yes. The middle of the night, a married couple, and what are they doing? Laughing. Well, Doctor, well... Well, I never... No, I should think not. People don't. Unless they're soft in the air, Doc. Do something, Doctor. Do, do something. Well... Well... Because if I didn't have the good fortune to have my husband, my Claude, to be so entirely stone deaf, I shudder to think what might happen. Because if my Claude is woken up with all his worries and his wind... Well... Yes, yes, but Mrs. Mellodew, I can prescribe some sedative syrup to help you with the sleep, but I can hardly go knocking on their door telling them to stop it, now can I? Why not? You'd be doing them a favour. They'll be dead before the year is out at this rate. Oh, and... And he's given his pigeons away. And to an Irishman as well. Not even sold. Given. Yes, yes, but... And as for his chances of running about with short pants on with all the other silly sods and playing football... Oh? Huh? Oh, oh, what? It's all his legs can do to carry him down them stairs of a morning. What? If he took off on a stretcher. And her on it with him, if I'm any judge. And it starts soon now, doesn't it? The... what's it? The uh, season. Mm, yes. Uh, Wardle Wanderers, yes. He'll never but... play. He'll not be fit. Mm. Ah. So, I will have some sleeping syrup, but the man needs a talking to, Doctor. A proper, sensible, medical talking to. Right? Doctor? 
Oh, no. And he did do. He never. He did. He flipping did. Oh, you're having me up. Amy, uh, right in the middle of Rochdale Road. I'm trooping back home. Up he comes in his car. Says, would I get in for a ticket? Bob's your uncle. Talking about love and stuff in Rochdale Road. <laughs> She said then. Well, he said, she said as how we were, well, at it really, all hours, night and day, and all night, and how she just couldn't get to sleep for noise, and how lucky it were, old Claude is deaf, and all oh, that were it. Yeah, worst of all, when we weren't at it like rabbits, we were laughing. He said that seemed to upset her more than anything. A married couple doctor in the middle of the night, doctor, laughing. <laughs> you think it weren't legal, wouldn't you? And any road, we've not been, have we? Well, not all night and every night. <laughs> well, well, but not all night, though. Hellfire. <laughs> Mind you, more than usual. I'm laughing more, too. <laughs> well, I know, but any road, who cares? If we're happy, silly old sod she is. Are you listening now, Mrs. Melodieu? <laughs> I bet she is, you know. Glued to that wall, Amy. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Arthur, oh, beloved, oh! Hey, oh, <laughs> you're terrible, you. Yeah, I know, but you like it, don't you? I do, I, I like it. <laughs> Mrs. Melodieu, it's good! <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Arthur, shall we? Oh, I know, I know she'll be listening. Uh, do you know what else she said? Uh, she said I'd give me pigeons away. To Billy Costigan. Well, you have done, haven't you? Well, uh, no, not really. Oh, I, th I he, thought... He's looking after him. He's racing them and looking after him for a bit. That's... By go, this is a good pie, this. Mmm, it is, Amy, love. What did Dr Peach have to say, then? Not what she said, what did he say? Oh, well, just... He'd give us some sleeping syrup stuff and... Uh, oh, he went on for a bit about some... Uh, what, what did he call them? Uh, tribe or something. Somewhere. Tribe? What tribe? Oh, just, no, just... Well, something about this tribe, when they're having a war, sort of style, all the warriors go and live on their own together for a bit, before a big battle. So they're right in peak condition for it. The battle. Battle? But... Oh, against Wardle Wanderers. Uh, well... Oh, that's it, that's all he's bothered about. That's all, yeah. Mind you, they did get walloped last year when we were away, but... That's all, yeah. And did you tell him what we'd agreed? Just a few weeks on our own, and... Oh, I did. No, I did. But, but... Well, they've not got a goalie, you see, except for me. Amy. Look, it's only a game. An hour and a half is all it is. Well, isn't it? And a bit of training. Keep fit a bit, now and again, but... When? Now and again? When? Well, uh... Now. Tonight. All right. What am I doing asking permission? Hell fire, all it is is a bit of fun. A run round, kick about and a breath of fresh air. A bit of fun and... I'll be back before you miss me, I mean... Oh, well, where's me tackle? Is it under the stairs? It's under the stairs. Right. It's a bit of sport. That's all it is. Only a game.
Co. Is that all? Sleep. Love? No. Oh, good. Now, I'm going to light the gas, so... Uh, and before you do, don't worry. Me tackle's soaking in the sink and me boots are wrapped in the news. So... Ah, right then. Get me stuff off, get me washed, and I'm all yours, love. <laughs> hey, guess who saved a penalty tonight? Oh, only a practice, but hey. Old Pete were thunderstruck. And all I did, I shut my eyes and jumped. And it hit me hand. <laughs> anyway, the kettle's on. I'll have a quick wash and a good one, and then... Uh, listen, Amy. If... If you want to, you could... Well... Tell me again about Fletcher's dam. Being watched, taking your clothes off. If... Amy? Listen now. Listen now. To me now, love. We're happy together now. At last. And talking to each other and in bed and it's grand it's good it's very very good now us but well i've always had me hobbies haven't i me sport and pigeons and that's the way i am well in it though that's how i am amy i'll go and wash anyway do you know how i am arthur eh? Do you know why I wanted some time together? Just for a bit. Just for us. Just like a proper honeymoon should be. Just for a little time. Because, my God, some women want a lot more than that, you know. Or some women want pineapples or meat pies with custard on. Or they do. They do. Meat pies with... Oh. Oh. Yes, I'm expecting... So, you see, this is the only time we will have together on our own. So, all I was hoping... Since for... when expecting? How long? Well, I've not made sure with the doctor yet, but only two months gone, you see. Two so... months? Oh. Only. Oh. Arthur, what? I mean, aren't you pleased too? It's what we wanted, isn't it? Arthur? What? Arthur, what are you thinking? Arthur? Hello? Morning, Arthur. Morning, Arthur. I thought you might be. And here you are. Yes. C can I come in? Yeah. Fine. Good. Oh, they're, they're all right, aren't they, the birds? Oh, they're all right. Yes, but I, I mean, they don't uh, peck. No. No. They do no harm. Right. <laughs> Good. Oh. That's all they do. Fly. In the sky. And come home. And eat. And sleep. Yes. And, uh, you slept with them, did you? Last night? Hmm. Yes. Well, of course, your, your absence was noted from the training, the practice, but uh, putting that aside for the moment, uh, Mrs. Granville now, um, she came to see me in some distress, so things were discussed very frankly, and uh, I'm here now to... She is expecting. She is. Yes. Your wife is expecting your child, Arthur. Now, that's what's happening. 
That's all that's happening. Your child. Which you don't believe. No. Well, right. Now, despite being a busy man, Arthur, I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to tell you the simple truth. And it is true. There never was a fancy man. Never. There's only ever been you. Amy made it all up from her head just to... What, what's funny, Arthur? What, what is this a grin about? I wonder, Doctor, did you ever come home from work and find Mrs. Peach waiting with nothing on and have her take all your clothes off and, and wash you from head to foot and stand back and look at you and tell you you look like one of them gods from a museum and tell you you were beautiful? I wonder... Well... Well, well, well no, but... Uh, then I, I'm not, am I? And, and Mrs. Peach is... Well, she's not like that. She, she never was, but... No. Amy wasn't either. Well, she is now. Oh, and good for her, says I. And good for you too, Arthur. My God, there's men will give their eye teeth. Where do ideas come from, Doctor? What? Well, from your head. Whose head? Ideas like that? No. No, you sat having your breakfast and your wife leans over you with jam on her nipples because she knows you've got a sweet tooth. Well... Oh. Did she? Learned, Doctor. Ideas like that are learned by a woman from a man. Now, 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 there you'd be surprised. I could tell you. You can't tell me anything. I've told it all to myself, over and over, and I don't believe it. No. See. So, you'll be living with the pigeons from now on, will you? I thought I was all right, you know. Before. Happy, I thought. Cricket, football, pigeons, painting and decorating. A few jars on a Saturday night. But now, I'd not go back to that. I couldn't. And that's me. Can't go back. Can't go forward. But why? I don't know if you read magazines, Doctor. Amy reads them. Women's magazines. Love stories. Full of people feeling ecstatic. Women mostly, but... And you think, he silly tossed a lot of it. But I felt that. Ecstasy. Right through all my body. Ecstasy. Have you ever? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I've had moments, but... Oh, fire. Oh, well. <laughs> go on, lad, go on. And I might tell you Amy's doing the same. Sat in your house, waiting, hoping for you to come home and come to your senses. And she's crying too. Has been all the night. Arthur, go home, lad. Go home. Arthur, can you live your life in a pigeon coat? No. No. Can you even hide for long like this? No. No, because chaps who do go funny crack us quite quickly. Yes. Right. So now, your wife loves you. Well, then. Well. <laughs> no. Not yet. Right. Look, but failing that, then, Saturday, the match. We haven't got another goal, it's so... Look, will you please try very hard to pull yourself together and hopefully go home too and be happy and that, but, but either way, will you play? Arthur! Come on, Billy! Oh, come on, Alan! Well, then, there he is, in his nice green jersey. Very satisfied. He might not leave his pigeons for you, but he will do for a game of football. Amy! Edith, sure up and let me look at him. That's not looking. That's gawpy. Have you no pride, our kids? But stop staring at him so long. You, you look hopeless. You do. Do you know that? Yeah. Mm. I'll say this for him. He's brushed his hair. I can't see any feathers, can you? 
He will come home, you know, love. Give him time, he will. Even the sulky ones like hot dinner. And cool nights are coming in too. Nobody lives with pigeons for long, not even a silly man. But, but don't stay. Don't beg. Play the waiting game, our Amy. No? Amy. Mind you, what will he do when he does come back? He'll never believe you. Not if I'm any judge of him, which I am. Every little row out it will come, the skeleton from the cupboard. We'll never be the same, Amy. Not now. Are you listening to me? No. No. Go pin. Open. Ready to beg. Well, aren't you? Truly, Amy. Yes. Good afternoon, ladies. Fresh air and a bit of sport, eh? Uh, uh, Mrs. Granville, I'm going to try and have a word again with you, no hope, but uh, after the match, yes? That man just kicked our old Cockroft instead of the ball. Right up his bottom. And the man with the whistle didn't blow it. Ah, well, he wouldn't, would he? He's their choice. Uh, but don't you worry, dear lady. Our chaps won't stand for that. Oh, there, oh, see? Oh, Possibly oh, unconscious. Oh, Grand game football. Of course, they'll get a free kick now. But... What? What? Oh, well, he's pointed to that chair. Did he send him off? He's sending him off. What? Never! Shame! <laughs> that is the most disgraceful... Th- Norman... No, Norman, don't! Oh, oh, my God! Oh, no, please, no. I've only been playing two minutes. Two men off in two minutes. We'll do well to draw now. Oh, Wait, was it wrong to hit him, the man with the whistle? Eh, not to be Now, keep calm, keep calm, village, steady! Baby, do you understand? Where's she gone? Oh, no, look. Doctor, look. Oh, well, she's talking to him. Arthur? Arthur! Will you not turn round? What are you doing, Arthur? I'm playing football. That's what I'm doing. Is that what you want to do? Yes, it is. I want to play football. And then? Go back to the pigeons? Arthur! Come home! Please, come home! No, watch the winger. Pass on, don't stop. Missing, it must all get more difficult, Doctor. The centre forward tackle, don't. Ah, 
Arthur, on your toes. In. Arthur, where's he gone? Oh, where's Arthur? He's been walking away. Look. What? No. I mean, you can't go home, Arthur, if you're the goalie. I mean, Arthur, come back. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. A footballer coming to his senses. Come in. Come on. Shut the door. Lock it. So then. Home sweet home, eh? And what do we do? Do you know, love? No. I don't know anything, me. No more. But we do love each other. We do. Yeah. Our Edie was telling me today how things would never be the same. Surprise, surprise, if I didn't know, you'd never quite believe me. The baby. Well, you don't, do you? No. I never will, eh? Never could. No, as if I didn't know. See, you like it, don't you? This, everything. A bit of this, a bit of that. Cricket, football, pigeons, us. Hmm? Do you know what I thought this morning? lying in bed and your side all cold and I thought I know what Arthur would really like an allotment well I put my name down last spring see love and work and, and everything you like it and really outside of us what I wanted for us I don't know that I do. No, I know that I don't. And I tried to change you. And I'm very sorry, Arthur, very... No, no. What? Don't say sorry for anything. I'm not sorry. Well, I am, because they'll not let you play football again, will they? And them that runs the football runs the cricket, so... And the pigeons, love? I gave them away. To Billy Costigan this morning. Oh, so you were coming home? Yeah. And how long for? And what to do? Arthur, don't ask me to choose, will you? The baby or you? No. No, no. No choosing to do. No? No. I don't want to be without you. I don't think I can ever be with you, but I'd not be without you. Do you know what I found under the bed? Yes. Ten foot six of rubber tubing. I did. I bought it from the co-op. It reaches from the fire, you see, to the bed. I know. One end on the spout and the other under the pillow. That's right. It's there now. Upstairs. But why didn't you just move the bed to nearer the fire? Why spend money on the tubing? Oh, well, I didn't think. I, I don't do much. Think. <laughs> but I don't want to strangle you. And I don't want to hurt you. And I don't want to be without you. But... Dead. Be dead. You keep thinking. I do. Are you hungry, love? Well, peckish. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll go upstairs and get ready. And in the meat safe, there's some sausage and bread in the bread bin. And on the second shelf, down on your left in the pantry, 
in the dish with poppies on, there's butter, and two bottles of pale ale by the sink, and the opener beside them. Yes, you see, I was hoping. Bring them upstairs, eh? Who cares about crumbs? No food? No. No beer? No. I couldn't. Come to bed then. Yeah. Oh, football kit. Uh, shall I take it off? I think so, love. It might look funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to put my wedding dress on. The bride and groom again, eh? But then I thought, well, anything I've got on will have to come off, so I got undressed too. Oh, Arthur, stand still a minute. Eh? Oh, Lord, lad, you do look lovely. Come on, it's warm inside. You look lovely too. You do. But I can't. I can't do anything. Can't. I know. I know. Only one thing needs doing now. Turn the gas on, love. Please. Oh. Uh. Right. And come to bed. Arthur! Arthur Granville! Our goalie! Ha! Come on, damn you! Come out and face the music! Don't you want to know the score, eh? The score, Arthur? Yes! No use knocking on their door, Doctor, is it? No. Nine nil! Nine Oh, no. they'll not bother them. They came back home this afternoon. The fair galloped up them stairs. And up them stairs have stayed, too. They like wild animals. I am living next door to a zoo, Doctor. Oh, not now. Oh, no. Quite as nice now. But when I go up to bed, what'll happen then? They'll wake up and at it like flaming rabbits, like things possessed. Mrs. Melodew, would you be so good in the morning as to inform our goalkeeper that we lost today by nine goals to nil, eh? Would you? And you might also tell him, too, that if he ever hopes to play for a decent team again, he would do well to emigrate. Or at least move to Manchester. Would you be so kind, Mrs. Melodew? Thank you. Doctor, are you tiddly? On second thoughts, no. Stand guard, Mrs. Melodew. Abstain from sleeping syrup. Remove cotton wool from ears. And listen, Mrs. Melodew. Because a gifted goal is gone potty today. And anything might happen. And if it does, do not call me. P.C. Stanley Allsop, 999, nine, nine. he's the man, not me. I bid you good night, dear lady. Ecstasy! What? Nine nil, you bastard! Nine nil! But I took me syrup. I shall sleep. Doctor! Arthur, love, sleep, good, dead, be dead, and not unhappy. Amy, Amy, give me your answer, do. 
I did love you. In The Fancy Man by Mike Stott, the cast was as follows. Amy Granville, Julia Ford. Arthur Granville, Pierce Quigley. Mr. Helliwell, Norman Mills. Edith Atkinson, Leslie Nicholl, Dr. Peach, Malcolm Hebden, Mrs. Melodew,